O Lord, may the words that I speak and the thoughts that our hearts think be acceptable in your sight. For you, O Lord, are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. One of my favorite scenes from the classic film Martin Luther occurs when Luther's superior in the Augustinian order, John von Staupitz, returns to Wittenberg after a trip to the lowlands where he was able to obtain a number of religious relics for the castle church, or as he puts it, for the glory of our church and the souls of our people. He joyfully shares the good news with the members of the congregation, and after enumerating the relics that he brought back with him, he tells the faithful that if a pilgrim was to venerate every one of the relics in the church, he would be forgiven of his time in purgatory 1,902,202 years plus 270 days. When Luther walks out on the presentation of the relics, von Staupitz confronts him about it. You don't think much of my acquisitions, doctor, he says to Luther. To which Luther responds, I'm not sure that Christ does. Such symbols are necessary to support the simple Christian in his faith, argues von Staupitz. But is the symbol replacing the meaning, asks Luther? Is the meaning itself lost? If it is, Luther goes on, then we are lost, lost and damned. Dr. Martin asks von Staupitz, if you leave the Christian to live only by faith, If you sweep away all such things, good works, the veneration of relics, what will will you put in their place? Luther's reply, Christ. Man only needs Jesus Christ. This incident took place sometime before Luther posted his 95 theses on the door of the castle church in Wittenberg, on October 31st, 1517, thus ushering in what we call the Protestant Reformation. It's obvious, however, that Luther had already come to a pretty clear understanding that we are saved solely by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ, that it is on Christ alone that our faith and salvation must be built. Luther had discovered the truth on which we will be focusing our attention in today's sermon, that Jesus is not only the church's one foundation, he is our only true foundation. When St. Paul wrote the words of our text to the Christian congregation in Corinth, he was writing to a badly divided church. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people, he says, that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. The church in Corinth was divided into factions, each faction claiming that they were following the true leader of the church. The congregation was further divided by other issues, the social status of the various members, whether they were rich or poor, whether or not they spoke in tongues, disagreement over marriage and whether or not it was proper to eat meat that had been sacrificed to idols. The believers in Corinth were divided because they were trying to build the church on many different foundations. And I, when I came to you, brothers, Paul goes on, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Paul and Apollos were not in competition. They were not trying to build the church on themselves, Paul insists. 
They and the other apostles were working together, each doing his part. I planted the seed, writes Paul. Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. According to the grace of God giving to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building upon it. But each one take care how he builds upon it, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The church in Corinth in Paul's day was trying to build on personal loyalties and on human opinions. The church in Luther's day was trying to build on religious traditions and on work righteousness. None of these is a fitting foundation for the church of Jesus Christ. There is only one firm foundation. As Luther puts it, Christ. Man only needs Jesus Christ. What foundation is the church building on today? On what are you building your faith and your hope for salvation? There are many possible answers to that question. One possible foundation is human reason. What makes sense or doesn't make sense to us? Now certainly God has given us our minds and our ability to reason. But do we want our reason to be the foundation of all we believe and hope for? Or to put the question another way, do we want a God who is small enough for us to understand? There are many who say, yes, if it doesn't make sense to me, I can't go along with it. Sometimes even the church thinks this way. If something in the Bible doesn't make sense to them, then they insist that it must not be true. Jesus never actually said that, they insist. It couldn't be what God meant. The problem with human reason is that it can be wrong. How many times haven't you or I been in a situation where we were sure that we had it all figured out? We were positive that we knew the answer, but we were wrong. Human beings are fallible, so human reasoning is fallible too. Human beings are limited. And so human reason is limited as well. Another foundation that people like to build on is success. Now here again, success can be a great thing. We all want to be successful. Churches like to be successful. To be able to to talk about how well they are doing, how fast they are growing. But should success be the bottom line? Should we be willing to do anything, even go against our basic principles, to be successful? I don't think so. In fact, I'm sure that that is not the case. That's always a disaster, a recipe for disaster. So success can be our foundation. Should the Word of God be our foundation? Now that certainly sounds good, doesn't it? Especially for those of us who are Christians. After all, doesn't St. Paul himself say in Ephesians 2.20 that the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, namely the Holy Scripture? Yes, it does. But Paul goes on to say that Christ Jesus himself is the chief cornerstone. The church of Luther's day believed that the Bible was God's word and they claimed to base all of their teachings on that word. But the church of Luther's day failed to see Jesus as the heart and soul of that word. Their focus was more on the law than on the gospel. So even the word of God, unless it is understood in the light of Jesus Christ, can't be our final foundation. It's also tempting to use our own personal experience as the foundation of our faith and life. This is especially so today when our society and culture put so much stock in personal experience. There's no absolute truth, we're told. Only what is true for you. So don't trust what other people tell you. Trust only in your own experience. But like our reason, our experiences can sometimes deceive us too. We may, for example, see what we want to see, not what is actually there. We believe what we want to believe, not what is actually true. And let us never forget St. Paul's warning in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, that Satan can and does masquerade 
as an angel of light. A number of years ago, a woman by the name of Betty Eady wrote a best-selling book entitled Touch by the Light. It purported to tell of her near-death experience in which she claimed to have visited heaven. Even though many of her visions contradicted Scripture and even the Gospel, there were those who defended the book and said it must be true since what Betty Eady was writing about was what she had experienced. Experience was all that mattered. It made no difference that Betty's visions were remarkably in line with her background as a Mormon. Human reason, personal experience, the desire for success, and yes, even God's Word are the foundations upon which many people build their lives and also their faith and their relationship with God. And we could no doubt come up with other foundations upon which people defend, depend as well. But are any of these the only sure foundation for our faith and life? As valuable as these things may be, especially the Word of God, none of them by itself is the one and only foundation upon which we must depend. For as St. Paul reminds us in our text, no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. That's what we sang a few moments ago, and that's the theme of our text and of this sermon. No one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. But what does it mean when we say that Jesus is our one and only sure foundation. It means, first of all, that all of Scripture is to be understood in the light of Jesus Christ. The Gospel is always primary. The Bible is not just a rule book, an instruction manual on which to live, a, on how to live a godly and moral life. If we read the Bible and we don't find Jesus there, then we've missed the whole point. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, though, that's all the Bible is, a guidebook for successful living. Too many sermons are being preached today that will have little or nothing to do with Jesus Christ. They will provide you with six steps to true happiness or five important things you need to remember when it comes to teaching your kids, but there is little in them about Jesus and what he has done for your salvation. This is not to say that we cannot learn the secret of true happiness in the Bible and find in its pages information about how to bring up our children. But these truths will have real meaning only when we, through the working of the Holy Spirit, have first found Jesus. Jesus is the key to it all. Jesus unlocks the true meaning of Scripture to all those who will put their faith and hope in him. Having Jesus as the only foundation of our life means, in the second place, that our hope for salvation is to be found only in Him and in what He has done for us. This is the heart and soul of Martin Luther's Reformation. The church of his day had lost sight of the gospel. Instead, the emphasis was on what people had to do to earn their salvation by venerating relics, buying indulgences and doing other good works. Luther said that the gates of heaven were opened to him when he discovered the truth of the gospel found in Romans 1.17. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. One often hears the question today, what would Jesus do? Certainly, it's a good question. But there's an even more important question. What has Jesus done? Jesus didn't come into this world just to set a good example for us to follow. He came into this world to sacrifice himself on the cross so that to sacrifice himself on a cross that should be ours and to die for sins for which we should be eternally condemned. That's why St. Paul wrote, I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. 
Having Jesus as our only foundation means finally that our faith in Jesus as our Savior does give guidance and direction for our lives. As the Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to, to God, which is your spiritual worship. This is where the question, what would Jesus do, comes in. Because Jesus died for me, because I am now a child of God through faith in him, I want to live my life to his glory and in accordance with his will. I want to raise my kids according to what he teaches me in his word. I want to treat my friends and neighbors with the same forgiving love that God has shown me. I want to share that love and forgiveness with others so that they can experience the grace and mercy of God for themselves. But it still all starts with Jesus, with trusting in him for our forgiveness and salvation. If I seek to follow him for any other reason than that he died and rose again for me, then I'm doing it for the wrong reason. I'm building on the wrong foundation. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. And we on earth have union with God, the three in one, and mystic sweet communion with those whose rest is one. O blessed heavenly chorus, Lord, save us by your grace that we, like saints before us, may see you face to face. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We will receive the offering at this time.